And as you could see from the tail of the tape here, the more experienced man, but the younger man at 21, the slightly shorter man, but with that perfect 5-0, and as Vernon O'Neill makes a very, very tough debut indeed here at Bama 17. Is Bama 17, and we are scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a jiu-jitsu and boxing specialist. He stands six feet tall. He weighed in at 153 pounds and making his professional debut, representing Diesel by way of London, England, Vernon O'Neill. And his opponent. Fighting at the red corner, an MMA specialist, he stands 5 feet 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 155.4 pounds, and has a flawless record of 5 wins, 0 losses and 0 draws. Two of those wins by way of TKO from Ludus Magnus from Doncaster, England, Mark Bonecrusher Dikeezy. When the action begin, your referee in charge of the action, Mark Goddard. So, Vernon O'Neill, a brown belt in BJJ under Roger Gracie and has had amateur boxing experience, so it's not like he's coming in here cold, Frank. And like, you know, I said in the earlier tonight, early broadcast, hey, you know, the more amateur you can get, you know, I had almost 1,200 wrestling matches before I started. Guys like Couture and Henderson had, you know, 1,500, 1,600. Whoa! Oh, shit, that is, okay. All right, no, there, there's something that, that we missed in the very beginning. Mark is doing a, sh he did it again. He's doing a shin-to-shin -shin leg kick, which is one of the biggest no-nos, because bone-on-bone is the easy way to get, you do damage your opponent, but you damage yourself. And he's doing it at such a perfect level that he's catching the calf on the inside and sweeping the leg out. That is a pinpoint technique that very few people will use without having pads on because there's so much damage can happen to your own leg. And we've all seen it, Frank. We know at the highest level that damage can be done you talk at the top fighters, I've seen it at regional level as well. But at the moment, until Vernon tied them both up there, he was doing what he wanted for that opening minute. He had perfect position, great spot. Well, Mark did a good job of, of really, Vernon tried to pick him up there, and Mark did a good job of setting himself down, setting his hips down, staying in good position. Oh, wow, nice hip position, nice hip changes. They're already around the corner. And he's pistoning that right hand oh, and using the cage. Okay, he's going to stop. See a, that. Point, a point's going to be taken away for sure on this one because he changed the position. He's got to take a point on this one because he, he, that the rule is is that if you grab the cage and it changes and it changes the outcome, which he was in the middle of a, he was in the middle of getting taken down. He grabs the cage and ends up on top. He's got to take. A, he should take a point away. Does he only give him a warning? He only gave him a warning. So, dear KC. Wow, that is... He, he's fortunate here, and he's back in the centre of, of the cage where he was most effective, and Vernon O'Neill looking to tie him up once more, Frank. I'm hoping Goddard saw something on the inside that we didn't see out here that, that caused that only be a warning, but that is a clear violation. That should have been a one-point taken away because it changed the outcome. He would have been taken down, and he ends up getting full amount by holding on to the cage. That's an that's a obvious one point, and he, and he loses position, but... Maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong, we'll talk to Mark after it's all said and done and see uh, where my mistake is, if, I, if I'm indeed wrong. But uh, I'm guessing Mark's wrong. Because <laughs> I have a microphone. So as they tie up once more, um, Vernon set out his stall, hasn't he? He hasn't been able to really get to where he wants, but you can see what he wants to do, Frank. He, he's also doing a good job of slowing, oh, I was just going to say, he's doing a good job of slowing Mark down by keeping him laid in, but he's not. At that point, he, didn't. he got his leg caught and got a foot to his back. But he was keeping Mark from hitting him, keeping Mark from, the easiest way to stop a guy that's faster or stronger and or bigger than you is to tie him up and name him against the cage. It slows everything down. It makes everything even at that point. And he was doing a great job of doing that with Mark and laying him there. So you saw what Mark wants. He wants him back upright. And we've seen a, a hint of that, that Vernon, uh, Vernon's boxing background as well, but nice movement from Mark and nice hand speed as well. And I love that head movement. So Vernon spent a lot of time walking straight into Mark, and Mark's just taking a half step back, quarter step back, and throwing punches. Catching him, leaning against the cage, resting a little bit in here, coming back out, but Vernon's taking a lot of blows. If he gets on top this time, he's got to find a way to stay on top. 
And he tried again, but it hasn't worked for him once no. more. It must be so frustrating for him. You know what he wants to, to do, Frank, but it's not so easily against Mark here. He wants to get on top. He wants to be in a good space, and then Mark's just not letting him. And he's, and he's doing it with some of the best techniques, you know, that he has to his, to, in his repertoire. Spinning, you know, leg tripping and spinning around and trying to end up on top. But it's, it's so easy for a guy that's athletic as Mark is to change his feet and change his hips and get back on top again. Oh, good head pressure in here, too. So when we come down to scoring, how, how do you see it as an overall round, Frank? I mean, Vernon is the aggressor in, in certain sense, but he's not having much success in that respect. No, in, in my mind, Mark wins this round 10-9. Uh, you know, it should be a 9-9 round uh, where, you know, he got, gets a point taken away. But um, that wasn't to be what we have to deal with as, from a judging standpoint, if you're judging this, at this stage of the game, I'm calling it, I'm calling it uh, a 10-9 for Mark. Vernon, he's so, and again, he's trying so hard here to get that position and to get where he wants to be. He's, every time he's getting a little bit closer, so he keeps hunting it because every time he gets a little closer, a little closer. But you feel coming into round two, once he succeeds, he's really going to make it work for him. Well, it's, it's getting it's getting to the point now where every takedown is a little bit closer in position. Wow, we're trying for a little splatal in there. Good job by Mark. And he sits him around, hips back nice and tight, dropping down, has the under has the overhook put in it, you know, puts Vernon right on his back. So what he's done now is he's taken all the this this that position just took the heart and soul out of out of every takedown that Vernon wants to do. That said, oh, it's only the last 10 seconds. You would feel that on his back, being with Roger Gracie, that Vernon would be very comfortable there, but he's not going to get the time to show us that. But now what I see happening now is him going in for takedowns going in the second round and, and giving up the position, like shooting, so that so that Mark will sprawl on him, so he can come underneath and now tr try to pull a traditional Gracie-style jiu-jitsu where he sucks himself in, almost, almost jumping the guard without jumping the guard kind of thing. Because the rain, there's that kick you were on about. Frank, Those things hurt. I don't care who you are, unless you catch him just right, you're doing a lot of damage to your own leg at the same time. And he does a perfect job on it, pinpoints it, and then goes up high later on in the round and catches him, catches him on a glove. But you saw how, how Vernon's head got shook. And that's what you want. You want every punch, even if he gets blocked, to do a little bit of damage. And in that exchange, that was all marked there. Very, very accurate. And here's the trying to see this is is this the fence this is the cage grab okay I don't see any position in there where Vernon did something as well where so both guys justify a warning what I saw was was a, I don't want to call him a cheater but he cheated on you know by grabbing the cage a foul he had a he had a foul by grabbing onto the cage so round two and it starts the way he started the first mark with a very high and doubles up the high point kick and again, you can see we know what Vernon wants, and he's there quicker this time, Frank. And in almost a sacrifice throw to end up on top, does a good job of pushing himself through. Now he's on top. What can he do with it? Half guard, good position. He's nice and tight around the head, giving good shoulder pressure. But ooh, good, nice and long with flexibility. He can get both legs in. He's got his hooks in. But now what's he going to do with this? He's in, a, he's in a dangerous position because he's holding on. Body triangle wrapped around. See his legs are tighter, nice and tight. He reinforced it. Now he has to dig for the head. He can't spend a lot of time trying to punch and hang out here. It's very exhausting being in this position. Vernon needs to keep digging for the head, and Mark's got to find a way to get him off. Now, Vernon is underneath his own control, so if Mark decides to do a back bend and, and flip backwards, completely legal. Completely legal to drop him on his head if he wants in this position because he's holding on to him. There's no danger of, of dropping your opponent when he's on you like this. You can do whatever you want to to get him off. I know a lot of guys will do a front flip and try to force the opponent's forehead to hit the cameras to loosen up the body triangle. Because if you have a guy in this position with a body triangle and he's got one of your arms tied up and you're leaning against the cage, you're actually helping him out. But if you come off the cage, you're carrying both weight. You know, you have all, all, uh, uh, all uh, uh, 80, you know, uh, 140 kilograms on top of you at one time. So a real turnaround here in round two from those opening kicks. And, I mean, Mark, he seems relaxed and comfortable still, Frank. He's not panicking. Very good position, very Oh, nice back elbow. Jeez. Mark's got to get himself higher, though. So he's, he's content to wrap his hands around the waist. He needs to sit up high and grab around the neck, grab around the shoulders. See, this is, see it's giving Mark position. He's allowing his head to get caught. See, he's starting to slide further and further down. 
And Mark looking to his corner. It's coming off. Mark's starting to slide off. See, now he's got it. See, now he's coming all the way off. He's got to dig up on top again. See, if, if, you, if you're ever in this position, Malcolm, you always need to be wrapped around the head, at least have one arm wrapped around the head, or, or both arms, one over, one under, locking yourself in nice and tight. Good news is he's winning the round. So yes. he's, he's almost coming up to the halfway point where this round is completely won by him at this, at this stage. Yes, it's been all defensive work from Mark Diacasey, except for that vicious elbow. But apart from that, as you said, and how much will this take out of Mark across the full round, Frank? I don't know. It doesn't look like he's using that much energy. He's kind of resting himself out. But he is under duress. You're worrying about somebody you can't see. What's he going to do? What's he going to hit you with? See, Mark found, and Werner finally, finally came off. He looked well, the body triangle came off. All that time he was on there, and really what happened, nothing is he was winning the round, but he didn't really do that much damage. Yes. Well, it makes it very interesting now as we come into the last two minutes. Looking to pull him in, Frank. See, he comes in, he's doing that high, you know, the Eddie Bravo style high mm. guard, you know, which 10th which, uh, plan jiu jitsu style call it rubber guard. He's trying to work himself into that whole game plan. With a guy like, like Mark, it's not going to work. He's you, that, that, that high guard, that rubber guard kind of game plan will not work on a guy like Mark just because of his, of his technique and his style. And so he goes to that well. He, he's content to stay in that position. If he keeps going to this spot, he's not going to be able to advance. He's not going to be able to win because he, he's in a spot where he can't get to a submission because Mark is too pressed too tight against him and giving him too much top pressure. But with the judges seeing that it was Vernon pulling him in, as you said, through that rubber guard, well, that's still, I still think with a minute to go, unless Mark does something dynamic, it will be his round. I really do think that, that Vernon, you know, like you said, unless he does something tremendous in the next minute, 15, I don't, I don't think there's any way that Mark's going to win this round. He spent, with a man on your back, for two and a half minutes. There's a lot of stuff for the judges to see. So we are counting down now just outside that final minute. And this could leave them with, with run, one round apiece here as we go into the final. And in a way, despite winning the round, you still imagine that Vernon will feel frustrated when he goes back to his corner. Absolutely. You know, he had his back. He had a good position for a finish. Now, now Mark is standing him up, which makes his things even worse. Because now what happened is that, that Vernon battled to get to the bottom. He battled to get there. And now once he finally gets there, he gets stood up again. And he looked tired getting up, Frank. He, he took his time getting up there. And Mark, you know, uh, you have to understand your referees. Mark Goddard doesn't doesn't waste time. If, if the moment he's, you know, the moment that he sees the both of you facing your chest or facing each other, he starts the fight again when he has the break. So you might even be looking at your opponent yet, and you're still on your knees, but your opponent's running at you. So when you have a referee like Mark Goddard, you got to get up right away. If he calls break because he get up. You have to because he's going to have a quick start. So a good finish from Mark, but we still feel that Vernon, when they go back to their stools and their corners, will have, will have leveled this, this back back up now. Frank. Both guys got a little bit of thinking to do. Um, it could very easily be one round apiece going into this. For Mark, the thinking is obviously the moment he came out on his game plan again, two kicks, but was immediately taken to ground this time. He has got to be cautious with his leg kicks, or his head kicks, rather. He's got to spend some time. And you can see here, this is towards the end. He was already starting to slide down. The reason I got elbowed is because his head was by the elbow. If you keep your head above on his shoulder, he can't ever catch you. The more tired you get, the lower. And you can see the difference now. Look at, look at, you can see the spot where Mark is getting, is, is tired, but he's not exhausted, where Vernon is now exhausted from holding on to the back piece like that. Then he comes down, he finally gets off, and Mark immediately turns around and attacks right away. And immediately, you know, generates the pressure of leaning back in again. What a, what a great position change by Mark to stay patient in there. And I have a feeling that Mark's going to come out here and throw a four or five punch combination and finish it off with a head kick if Vernon backs away. Yes, yeah, interesting to see what Vernon does now as they as they come straight out for the third and final round. And as you said, the head kick straight out, Frank, and it lands. Oh, lands clean twice. Vernon took it, but wow, that landed clean on the button twice. Okay, see, see how Mark is moving his head with every strike. His head is not in the same position. Yeah, they're, they're haymakers, and he's trying to throw those big ones in, but his head is out of the way. So even if he gets countered, you're not going to be able to hit him. No, On the other hand, a right and a left there as well, Frank, that landed cleanly. Vernon the entire time is sitting there with his head in the same position, throwing punches almost like he's, in a, he's on a pivot where he's got a, a pole stuck to the top of his head through, the, through his bottom that he just sticks there and just rotates around that pole. His head never moved. So every time Mark threw something, it hits something. Even if it hit his guard, it still rattled his body. So now Vernon's in a desperate position. We had to dive in and chase him to the cage 
to keep from getting hurt and hitting him. Well, he, he looked for to, to get the leg wrapped there, and it was a nice turn again by Mark to prevent that. And you think now that he'd really want to disengage and keep this upright, but he's definitely winning that side of the battle. Wow. Uh, you, we can't see him right now, but Vernon is, is cut on the right side of his face. He's got a he's got a bad bleeder. One of those punches lit him up and opened him up. Uh, the back of uh, Max Bark. Uh, Max Mark's back is bloody. Wow, see that's 17 times fast. He's from oh a great knee to the face. He's got okay, Mark knows the end is near. You can see see he's trying to pick up the pace now. He's leaning in a little bit more. Now he's trying to push on the gas a little more. He's, you can tell how much harder he's leaning in against the cage. He's doing he's, much he'll look to job. work that cut as well, Frank. He's you know he's he's mature and experienced enough to do exactly that, even at 21 years of age, because that's the other thing we forget. This is still a very young man. I forget. I keep thinking he's in his 30s. It's, it's amazing to me how young and how good these guys are at this age. Like I said, you know, when at that age group, I was trying to make an Olympic team and wrestling in, in the States, but I was, you know, I was in college. I was out partying. I was out hanging out. These guys are way more dedicated to their craft than I ever was. Yeah, so we're inside the last three minutes now, and another big turnaround here. We're going to do a good job. He's doing everything he's supposed to be doing. It's just he's being outpowered and outmatched. And Mark Goddard, our referee, seen enough. He's going to split them again, which I will think will suit Mark rather than Vernon. And again, the oh. right hand lands sweep. Oh! Wow. oh. <laughs> See, his maturity level hasn't quite increased yet. Vernon wants him to be in there to keep him getting hit. Mark hit him with, with five and six different punches from different angles. You wanted him to step back, didn't you, Frank? Take the half step back and start beating him up again with the body. You know, he kicked he kicked him down. He punched him and then kicked him down. He hit him so hard he swept his legs out from underneath. That's, that's a huge amount of position. And it was a superb combination. And that half step back, you can go all over again. And you've got to force Vernon into that position. Whereas actually, he's given Vernon the opportunity to hang on and clear his head now. As you said. You forget he is only 21. It's still a learning curve, and let's be honest. Unless something dramatic really happens now, he's probably going to go to six and now as well. Yeah, I, I feel like he is too. And, and I can honestly, I can see some of the judges making it 30-27 at this point. Uh, but I, I think I'm going to see a, a couple of 29-28, which is what it should be. Uh, but you never know. Like you can't really tell what judges are looking at these days, and so it's difficult to tell, you know pick it. But for sure. If any one of these judges sees Vernon winning this fight, they need to be, you know, taken out of the sport because there's no way that Vernon is winning this fight from any mindset. No, and if, even if, close there, Frank, there's some excellent little dirty boxing going on by Mark as well. He's he's targeting that eye with his left hand, coming forward, and I think this is a young man now that knows, looking for the safety, and said working his head there. I, I think this is a young man that's confident he's taking the points. Doing everything smart. Nice head pressure, so he gets his head with the chin. He, he, you can now you can control a guy's body without looking at him. You know where he's at. You know where his head's at. You can lean into him a little bit more with those, with those kind of position changes. But Vernon's doing a great job of tying him up and keeping him in this position. And Mark realizes that's what Vernon's trying to do. He's trying to hold him in there. So now he's going to start suffering him a lot quicker because he knows that Vernon wants to rest and break. And he wants to give Mark a chance to finish his fight. And there's that right hand. As you said, it all comes from that subtle head movement as well. He shifts the head, gets the shot in. He's hard to hit back cleanly. But like yourself, with the way he's winning the stand-up, you'd like to see just a little more subtlety and movement back out and make Vernon work all over again. Yeah, really, really try to make Vernon have to hunt and be, be under fear, be under duress the entire time. You know that he's, he's able to rest in this position. So you're giving him a chance to rest. He doesn't have that much to rest. You want to keep the guy under constant pressure whenever you can. And, and Mark's kind of letting him out of the constant pressure. But this time, he didn't back out the gas pedal. He kept it on the entire fight, which is an improvement from last time. But at the bottom line is, as we count down now to this final bell, this is another big win for a young man, 21 years of age. He's not doing everything perfectly, but he's got real potential, hasn't he, Frank? He really does, and, and room for growth, which is good. Being this good, and, and in our minds, going to 6-0, you know, we'll get waiting for the official announcement, but thinking that he wins this fight, he's going to be 6-0. Being this good at 6-0 and having that much space to still improve, it's amazing to see it like that because he knows, you can see that there's space to improve. You can see there's space to go to. You can see, look at how much he moves his head. And even, and you saw the one time he stopped, Vernon caught him with just a little, a little small poke. He immediately comes back in and starts moving his head again, goes low and kicks him down the back of the knee. That's where he needed to step back, Frank. When he yes. step, stepped in, he needed to step back out just here. This is where he needed to stay. Look, this is superb work. 
but here's the mistake. That point there, just step back, make him go all over again. Hit him with the shoulder bump, take a half step back, start throwing a bunch more punches. Oh, is he, wow, from, from kicking. Did he, did he hurt himself kicking? Now, it's the other leg they're looking at, but this is the thing that people don't realize with kicking. You put so much pressure on your post leg when you're kicking across, and they have to hit something that pinpoint and perfect when you're going or wrapping around the shin, trying to go shin to shin, but trying to catch the calf on the inside by wrapping around, it puts a lot of torque on that post knee. He might have hurt himself trying to get that leg kick off. It's not only about doing damage to your opponent, but it's also about not doing damage to yourself. Might explain why he was keen to wrap up as well. When we're saying step back and go again, after his work, maybe that shows why he was keen to tie up and rest himself, Frank. Could that explain a lot. It absolutely does. It changed my mindset entirely about what happened now. Ladies and gentlemen, after three exciting rounds, we go to our judges' scorecard. Your winner, by unanimous decision, in the red corner, Mark Bonecrusher Dakizi!